Javon, we've got our latest questions for the Raptors mailbag. Let's get right into it. If everyone is healthy for this team, who is in your starting lineup? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. I think, you know, if I'm looking at this team, they've had a number of guys that have played well at points in the season. Um, they have a number of guys, a couple of guys rather, that really haven't met the expectations of the fans. So if I, I think if I'm now that guys are healthy, if I'm putting a team together, I'm putting that star and fire together, I'm going to go Freddie V. I'm going to go Gary Trent Jr. I'm going to go Pascal Siakam, uh, OG, and the new guy, Kim Birch. Um, I think, you know, with that, I'm probably going to get crucified for not having Kyle in there. But I think Kyle has to be the big bro now. He's got to be the OG. And whether he stays with this wow. team going forward uh, or is with another team, that's that's going to be his role going forward. And, and you know, but that I don't take anything away to, from what he's done to this for this club. Okay, okay. I, I think you're going to have some people in your mentions based on that. Uh, there's no way I'm leaving Kyle Lowry out. I think uh, even for that starting lineup, just from a developmental standpoint, to have his leadership on the floor as much as possible, I'd have him in there. Uh, Fred Van Vliet, as you said, OG, Siakam, no arguments there. And yeah, I'm, I'm going with the big man. I'm going with Kem Birch. And you think about that second unit, the way Gary Trent Jr. can supply that scoring. You think about uh, Chris Boucher off that second unit as well. I think now you've got a real bench uh, to contend with and supplement that starting lineup. That's if they're healthy, if they're really uh, looking to make some noise in the playing tournament in the playoffs, which leads us to our next question. Javon, what is going on? Are the Raptors thinking about the ping pong balls? Are they thinking about the playing tournament? Where do you see it right now? Listen, I, I don't know where we are, but I, I can say this is that this is the worst position that they could be in because I'm sure they start to look towards that lottery. And now you have, you know, you have some young guys that are playing and getting some experience. But at the same time, these guys are winning. Now, because of that, um, you know, you're still in the conversation of that 10 playing spot that isn't necessarily a great, won't put you in a great spot for the lottery um, and doesn't do enough to make you really a contender. On the, on the pro side to that, you know, you have a number of the young guys that are gaining valuable experience, uh, whether that showcases them and, and allows them to be in a package in this summer, in the off season, or, you know, it gives them that experience that they need going forward and that confidence uh, going into next season. So there's two sides to look at it. Um, and from a player standpoint, it's got to be frustrating because those guys are competitors. That, nonetheless, at the end of the day, they, you know, they all want to be on the court. They all want to win. Um, and, and, you know, Freddie V has expressed his frustrations with that. And, and you can tell by some of Nick Nurse's re responses as well. So where we are, is there a clear answer to it? We have no clue. But, uh, you know, these guys are going to keep doing, doing what they're doing. I'm borrowed a line you made about the OKC and you know, how they're handling Shea Gilgis Alexander. The Raptors are going to protect their investments. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> in terms of investments, they made an investment into Utah Watanabe. They've given him a standard NBA contract. I think it's a great reward. You think about what Utah has done over the course of the season. Obviously, he had a blip when he got injured and tried to play through it, and we saw him impacted by his movement. But I think beyond that, you look at the hustle on defense, always at the right place at the right time. And the thing I love now is confidence shooting the ball. Before, he's sort of looking over, saying, hey, is this my turn in the offense? There's none of that now. He, when he's open, he is vaulting up, and he's getting that shot up, and he's making them. And you have to be happy for a guy like that. If you date back to his, you know, his going undrafted in 2018 and you know, his back and forth with uh, Memphis Grizzlies and their G League team uh, to, the, to date now, like he's far more confident. When you look at how he started this season, he did it on the defensive end. He did everything you wanted. Uh, a coach could ask for from a young guy, from a guy that's just coming to this league and gaining some experience. Defensively, he was getting deflections in the right, and he was in the right places, um, you know, just making stops. And, and we laughed about it. But if you look back to his career, he was the Atlantic 10 uh, defensive player of the year in 2018. So we shouldn't, it shouldn't come by surprise to us. Um, but like you said, his confidence has gained, he's growing so much over the last, you know, the last stretch of the season. I think over the last six games, he's averaging 10 points. Uh, and about four rebounds. So you're just getting to see him grow and continue to grow. So, you know, I'm extremely happy for him because uh, he's deserving of this and he's earned it the right way. Um, and, and you can't say enough about where his potential 
uh, his growth. And again, he's going to have a big summer, uh, potentially playing with his national team, and then could, could be in the future here as well.